benevolent sky shining down on the jewel of Central Florida. We are in Orlando, and ESPN College Football today presented by Nokia. And the inaugural Conference USA Championship game today presented by Xbox 360. A couple of teams today, a great story of two improbable journeys to this point. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman, Rob Stone down to the field. Glad you came aboard to this, the inaugural Conference USA Championship game. Now, when you look at these two teams, great compelling stories. Last year, UCF didn't win a football game. This year, they've won eight coming into this contest. Tulsa, a couple of years ago, Chris, they were on life support. Well, they were. They were 1-11, and and in comes Steve Cragthorpe. And what Steve had to sell was hope. He said it was tough. I had to sell hope to anyone who was listening. Now I can sell hope and results. On the other side, you have George O'Leary. When you talk about George, he's been through some adversity. Everybody knows the story. So when you have adversity within your football team, you've got to be a strong leader, especially when you have a young team like UCF. His young people have been able to learn from George, and he's a great leader for this young program. And right now, Rob Stone standing by with the head coach, George O'Leary. Coach, what's the biggest difference between this team that lost 17 consecutive games and is now on the verge of a conference title? Well, probably attitude, no question about that. The attitude of the players, the fans' support, you can hear it. 1990 on this field you won a national title as a defensive coordinator with Georgia Tech how would a conference championship win here on the same field with UCF compare I'd just be outstanding but we got a tough show ahead of us here and uh, two good teams and uh, turnovers going to be the key coach we appreciate your time thank you all right we are set for the opening kickoff this game brought to you in high definition by Phillips now Tulsa won the toss deferring to the second half UCF electing now to receive and this place is amped. They are ready to set it off. This has been the talk of Orlando for the last couple of weeks. Both these teams have had an extra week off to prepare. And we are underway. Francis starting from his own nine. Brought down just shy of the 20-yard line at the 19. That's where starting quarterback Stephen Moffitt will start off with the reins of the offense. Moffitt from Winter Park. He's a junior. Last year underwent some very tough love and some tough lessons in that winless season of 0-11. This year, though, completing 61% of his passes, 18 touchdown passes to go along with just six interceptions, a pretty good ratio of 3-1. to one. First down and 10 UCF from their own 20-yard line. With a single back set. That's Kevin Smith in the backfield. And Smith gets the game's first handoff. Goes over the left side of that offensive line to pick up about two yards. As we look at the Navy for Men starting lineups, Kevin Smith was the freshman of the year in Conference USA. Joined by Peters, Darcy Johnson, a talented tight end, Rocky Ross, and Brandon Marshall, the team's leading receiver. Up front on the offensive line, Cedric Gagne Marco is the leader up there. He's flanked by Brown, Smith, Anderson, and Sitton. Second down and about seven to go now for UCF. This time they line up out of the eye. The fullback is Jason Peters. It's Kevin Smith again right up the middle. And Kevin Smith close to a first down just shy of the 30-yard line. Bobby Klink making the stop as we take a look at the defensive alignment for Tulsa. They play a 3-3-5. Lohr, Neemans, and Evans up front. The linebackers, a pretty good group. Bunting, Nelson Coleman, and Chris Chamberlain. And in the secondary that has been decimated since early in the season, this is how they look. Blackshire, Germany, Bobby Klink, Nick Graham, and Julian McGowan. Third down and short coming up for UCF. Running for the third consecutive time. And Kevin Smith picks up the first down, running off tackle to his right. Chris Chamberlain making the tackle on the play for Tulsa. Speaking with George O'Leary and Tim Salem, the offensive coordinator, the one thing that UCF has to do to be successful against this three, I like to call it a 3-5-3, three, three, is pound the football. And when you have five linebackers, smaller guys, you're lining up in two backs and coming at him right at him and punching him in the mouth. And right now, they're establishing the line of scrimmage, taking it to Tulsa. Picked up five yards on that play, Chris. First down and 10 from the 34. Marshall is the slot receiver. The pass complete. Another first down out of the 47-yard line. That one goes to Rocky Ross. The 
6'2 freshman picks up 14 yards for another first down. And you have to like the boys that time with Stephen Moffitt. Yeah, and Coach O'Leary told us, I said, Coach, what was the biggest improvement that Stephen Moffitt has made from last year to this year? He said, Chris, nothing physical. Everything has been between the ears. And so when you're strong between the ears, you have the physical talent that Moffitt has, you're naturally going to improve. And he has mental toughness because going on 11 doesn't do a lot for your confidence in the quarterback. Seven games in the game losing streak dating back to a couple of seasons ago. They run it again over the left side. Out near midfield, it's Kevin, Kevin Smith, Smith once again. Brought down by Nick Bunting. Smith picked up about three yards on that play. And, uh, you can't say enough about the reclamation project that George O'Leary has done this year with UCF. They had the 17-game losing streak. And then that win against Marshall in the third game of the season, finally snapping that insidious streak. And that did a lot for the confidence of this team. Uh, needless to say, they've been a different team since. They've won eight of their last nine. Second down and seven coming up for UCF. And off again, Kevin Smith. And Smith down to the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and about two to go after that five-yard pickup. Nelson Coleman making the stop on the play. Chris, they really are established in the line. Well, yeah, and the philosophy of UCF is this, Mark. They got a lot of young players playing. When you have that many young players playing, you don't want to put a lot of thought. Thought brings hesitation. So they're very simple at what they do, but they do it well, and they pride themselves on being a physically tough football team and trying to pound the football. Right now, they're winning the battle at the line of scrimmage at the point. That level. Third down and two. Loss in motion. Handed off to Smith again, and Smith got hit behind the line of scrimmage, but surges forward close to the first down. Bobby Blackshear making the stop in the secondary for Tulsa. It's going to be close to a first down. It looks like they're going to elect to measure here. Knows of the ball resting just at the 43-yard line of Tulsa. George O'Leary, the former national coach of the year in 2000. George O'Leary giving that, that kind of fist pump and saying, we're, we're shoving it right down their throat. What they're doing is they're running the power play where you're pulling a backside guard. Kevin Smith's a one and done. What I mean by that, one move and he's putting his head down and rolling. Big fella at 6'2", 195 out of Miami, and they got the first down. Rob Stone for Tulsa it wasn't easy just getting here, was it? No way, man. Due to travel issues, Tulsa arrived at their team hotel here in Orlando roughly 14 hours ago. It was a faulty hydraulic pump which affected the landing gear, which forced the cancellation of their 10 a.m. charter flight yesterday. The Golden Hurricanes packed up, went back to campus, had meetings and their walkthrough. And I'll tell you the rest of the story after this play. All right, Rob. Right now, Smith has a total of 24 yards on six rushes. Moffitt back to pass, going up top. Has a man on the post. Touchdown! Willie Thornton! Well, when you're able to establish a running game, when you have press coverage and you got a guy that can run like Thornton, he hits him a little out move and throws the post. And Moffitt puts only where puts the ball only where his guy can get it. And you see Moffitt is excited about the throw. It's a great throw and a great start for UCF. And Willie Thornton with his first touchdown catch of the season for Moffitt, the 19th touchdown pass of the year. The extra point is good. And Willie Thornton filling in for Walker, who was injured and out for potentially the rest of the season. But Steven says if he's even, he's leaving. 7-0 UCF when we come back. Steven Moffitt with a touchdown pass a few moments ago, and UCF leading 7-0, just under 11 minutes to play here in the first quarter. A look at that scoring drive, and they set it up pretty methodically with the running game, Chris. Anytime you're establishing the line of scrimmage, and Tim Salem told us that look for Horton early. The kid was off practice squad, basically, and he goes up deep. There's a look at Ashlyn Davis, the NCAA leader in kickoff returns for touchdowns, and he might get a shot here three yards deep, but he elects oh. to take oh, a oh. knee. Had intentions, it seemed, ah, to deep. take it out, and uh, he's already won back one this year for a touchdown, had five a season ago, but you don't like that? No, no, if you're the all-time 
kick returner touchdown man in the history of the NCAA. You're three yards deep. Bring it out. Bring it out with authority and confidence. First down and ten. We'll see if Tulsa can answer. Moss in motion. And Paul Smith fires complete. A dart to his tight end. That is his main man. His ace. Garrett Mills with a first down into UCF territory at the 43 yard line. He'd beaten a linebacker, an L. Sandy, on the play, and he picked up 37 yards. Now, this is a beautiful play. Right here is Mills. He's going to come here, but what they'll do is they'll fake the bootleg like the play's going to be thrown over here. And watch Mills. He'll sneak right across the field. Look at him. See, sneak, 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 sneak. I'm open, man. Give me the rock. You got the rock, and he's gone. That's why he is who he is. Yeah, keep an eye on number 20. He leads all tight ends in the nation in every important statistical category. Garrett Mills, this time flanked out wide. Parrish is the lone back. Ashland Davis in motion. They give it to Parrish. And Parrish is stopped up the line of scrimmage at the 43 by Paul Carrington. Let's take a look at the Nivea for men starting lineups. Parrish got the call on that last play. He's joined by Mills, who caught the first pass. Ramsey, McQuiller, and Idris Moss at wide receiver. Up front on the offensive line, been a bit of a work in progress at times this year. Mengers, Amister Rise, Dannenhauer, Stoneham, and Jeff Parrott. It'll be second down at about 10 to go from the 43 yard line for Tulsa. Line up in another three receiver formation. Davis goes in motion. Smith hits Davis. Brought down just shy of the 40-yard line by Paul Carrington. His second stop of the game along with James Cook. As we take a look at that defense for UCF. Carrington leads the team in sacks up front. Then it's Nelson. Shalligan gets the start in place of Gabriel and Chris Welsh. The linebackers look like this. Sandy in the middle flanked by Cook and Richards. In the secondary, Joe Burnett, one of those talented freshmen doing a great job this year. Joined by Neal, Parks, and Benson. Third down coming up for Tulsa on this, their opening drive of the ball game. Eight yards to go. Smith working out of the shotgun this time. Completes the pass to Garrett Mills to the 32 for the first down. And let's finish up on Rob. Their, their journey here was something else. Yeah, hey, we, we know about travel issues, don't we? But yeah. uh, to, Tulsa ran into a doozy yesterday. Again, the faulty hydraulic pump on their plane. So at 3 p.m. local time, they went back again to the Tulsa airport. Another two-hour delay. Same problem, same plane. I don't know about you, but at that point, I'm a little skittish about getting on board at that point. But Coach Cragthorpe took it all in stride, saying, hey, the new schedule worked out perfectly since all season. They've done their day-before game preps on campus anyways. Yeah, a little extra study time. They didn't get to their hotel until about 10:15 last night. Adams in the ball game now for Parrish. Smith sets up the screen. It's to Adams. Adams with a nice move and another first down. And he's brought down hard at the 17-yard line. But Chris Tulsa moving the ball well. Well, I love what Tulsa is doing now. They have about 5,000 different formations, but they have 10 plays. This is set up beautifully. First of all, Adams does a good job of selling it. Get behind his big hogs. There's Stoneham right there getting a nice block. Spin move. Good hit, but wrap him up. But anytime you can establish a screen game, it slows down the pass rush. And right now, both offenses showing great composure in their opening drive. Picked up 14 yards on that screen pass. First down and 10. Running it nicely, that's Adams again, and Adams brought down at the 12 yard line. Picked up about five on that play. You look at the three running backs, it's a troika of productive runners when you look at Parrish. Adams and Dials will also get times, and Steve Prankthorpe, his backfield runners have gotten over 1,500 yards total on the season. Now, you can split that up any way you want. That's productivity. Well, and the, and the kids are used to it, Mark. The backs are used to splitting time. And so you're always having fresh legs and fast legs coming in and doing the job. Now, this is where UCF's defense has excelled in the red zone all year. Mills in motion. They've got four receivers out to the top of your screen. And Smith is going to take off. A predetermined run. There's a flag down back at the 12-yard line as Smith goes down to the two. Let's wait and see if this play stands or not. Holding, 67 on the offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. 
two great stories today on the field. Tulsa just three seasons ago won one football game. They were 1-11, and and that is the object of both teams' affections today. A possible invitation to the AutoZone Liberty Bowl on the line today. Second and 15 for Smith. Underneath complete and stopped up right at the 16-yard line was Garrett Mills. Brought down nicely by Joe Burnett, and you can't say enough about that talented cornerback, a freshman from Eustis, Florida, just about 30 miles from here. And Lance Thompson, the defensive corner, says, look, man, this kid, he doesn't know how good he can be. He doesn't know that he is a special player. Also dangerous with returning punts. They've got five, pardon me, six true freshmen that have started this year for UCF. Two-thirds of their lineup are sophomores and freshmen. Lance right there. Smith is five for five on this drive for 70 yards. Third and eight coming up. Make that six for six. Adams with a nice move. Touchdown. A missed tackle on the play by Benson. And Paul Smith now has his 18th touchdown pass of the year. We're a point away from being tied in. Get the feeling we're going to see some fireworks on the field today. Well, what they did, Mark, they had trips, and they run screen away from trips to outflank the CF, UCF defense. And right there, if you don't wrap up, good backs like Adams will make you miss. Vincent had a shot on him, but he comes in with just a shoulder. Terry and Adams puts Tulsa one point away from tying this game up. It's Christmas time. Wrap up. <laughs> and we are knotted. At seven apiece. Bit of a gift that time from UCF defensively. Back with more, not at seven. Brand new stadium they're going to break ground on right after this season is open. Moffitt back to pass, and Moffitt brought down at the 31 yard line by Nelson Coleman. This is what Todd Graham does, defensive coordinator for Tulsa. They're going to bring heat, and they're going to bring it a lot. And this is something that was concerning to uh, Tim Salem. Right there is Coach Graham. They're going to bring a lot of heat, and, 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 and Nelson Coleman came right through. Watch Nelson Coleman. He's going to come in and watch watch his pad level. See, he's able to get under. And see that little uppercut? That's called a rip move. He threw a beautiful rip move with his low pad level. The offensive lineman lost leverage. Coleman gets a sack. He's their 27th of the season. Coleman's four. The punt bouncing out of bounds at the 33-yard line. And we're going to take a timeout with 2.54 to go in the first period. The inaugural Conference USA Championship game. A bowl game on the line. Paul Smith at quarterback. His father, Ron Smith, was the quarterback coach for the Gundy brothers, Mike and Kale. A gaping hole up the middle and a nice run by Parrish for another first down. They gashed that UCF defensive front. Well, exactly, Mark. I mean, when he gets to the second level, there's nobody there. Watch, he's going to hit it right in between here and here. Watch the blocking of the lineman up front. See that they turn people out. Somebody's not gap sound. You have two people in one gap, and Urell Parrish is good enough where he's not going to dance through the hole and run on high heels. He's going to blow it up in there just like he did. Parrish ran for a total of 624 yards this year, seven touchdowns, and a nice groove this afternoon. First down and 10 for the Golden Hurricane in UCF territory. Smith fires incomplete. Not sure who that was intended for. Richard McQuellar was the closest receiver in the area. It'll be second down and 10 coming up. And the impressive thing about the Tulsa offense right now is, again, they're giving UCF, a young defense, a lot of different looks. Now, if UCF can gain its composure, they're going to see that they're doing the same plays just off of different formations. And I'm impressed with Tulsa's offense. You know that Mills is the guy they're trying to get the ball to. And, and, and they find ways to get him open because they move him to all different spots on the field. Second down and 10 coming up. We'll see where Mills lines up this time. Mills at the top of the formation. Releases off the line and Smith finds him underneath. Mills in space. And Garrett Mills with a first down pushed out of bounds at the 19-yard line. And for more on Mills, let's go downstairs to Rob.
Jonesy, usually when a professor calls a head coach, the head coach starts shaking his head, closes the door, expects the worst. Not the case with Mills. Earlier after the spring semester, Coach Cragthorpe received a call from Mills' entrepreneurship class teacher, notified him his player had received the highest grade in the entire class. He's a business major with a 3.91 GPA. He may be able to put that financial knowledge to use in the NFL. Draft expert Mel Kuyper told me Mills has a good chance of hearing his name called late in the draft and that he may end up becoming a halfback or a fullback. All right, Robin certainly has a bright future. Meanwhile, down in the field, there was a penalty on the play against Joe Burnett. So they called a face mask on him and moved the ball down to the 10 yard line in all a 23 yard plus play pickup on the play. And Mills. Getting a well-deserved breather. First down and goal coming up. Terry and Adams in the backfield. As the backs line up out of the eye, Adams into the near side of the field. He's brought down to the six-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. Second down and goal coming up for Tulsa. Davis in motion, but they give it to Adams. Touchdown! Terry and Adams lacerating that defensive front again and getting some great walking up front from Mengers, Dienhauer, and Stoneham. Yeah, watch. Uh, they're going to watch all these guys down. You're going to get a linebacker that overruns the play. And this is where Adams has his vision. See how everybody's getting washed? He, he's just running into space and into bodies. That's, he's, he's vacating his gap of responsibility. And when you vacate that gap of responsibility, a back like Adams with his vision is going to find the open area, and he burst into the blue. And now it's going to be on defensive coordinator for UCF, Lance Thompson, to find the route counter strategy as Davis Adams, meanwhile, with his sixth rushing touchdown this season. Back for the start of the second quarter, ESPN College Football presented by Nokia. The inaugural Conference USA Championship game presented by Xbox 360. 14-7, Tulsa leading Central Florida. UCF with possession, looking at second down and about 14 to go. Moffitt back to pass, and he's picked, and this could be a pick six. Graham! Pushed out of bounds inside the five-yard line by Moffitt. Nick Graham sat on that. And it's first and goal for the Golden Hurricane and a golden play by Nick Graham. Well, you're exactly right, Mark. What Graham, first of all, is playing zone defense. He's in his nice little back pedal. Gets a good read and read the mail. He read the mail the route, he jumped the route, and he's off to the races. Now, to outstanding job by Moffitt of atoning for a mistake by getting him out of bounds, forcing the Hurricane to take some offensive snaps. But when you can read and break on a football like that, you don't have a chance. So what you have to do is you gotta start going up over the top to get him from, keep him from sitting. Talk about working with a short field. First and goal, Parrish in the backfield. Parrish over the top. Touchdown! Yule Parrish makes it into the end zone on the lunge. And one play after that interception, it's Tulsa with a 20 to 7 lead. Nick Graham set it up, room service style. Parrish, that was his eighth rushing touchdown of the season. Well, Parrish recognizes there's no room to hit it down low. Jumps over the top and is able to stretch the ball across the plane. For six. Ball with the extra point and Tulsa after trailing seven to nothing. Getting their little bit of dance on and why not? Nick Graham set up this play and Parrish has his flight license when airborne for the score. We'll be back after this. With the handoff, he finds a nice hole, and Kevin Smith with a change of gear all the way out to the 40 Kevin yard Smith line. And Chris, you were saying during the commercial, yeah. where's Kevin Smith? I, 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 I was wondering where he was. I mean, he comes out and he gets about 30 yards in the opening drive. Kevin Smith comes in and he's a natural runner. Look at shoulder square. There's the cut, and there's the burst. Nick Graham, poor angle, and you see the burst. Now, I don't want to see this. You're a true freshman. Put your head down and run over a safety. Don't duck out of bounds. Run him over. 
Miami, Florida. Get that extra one yard? Yeah, get the extra one. Exactly. 18 inches? Is it worth <laughs> yeah. that? Okay. It is. After that 34 yard pickup, it's first and 10. A little more breathing room. Moffitt on the bootleg again. We've seen them do that frequently. That time, though, incomplete at the 40 yard line. For more on the freshman Kevin Smith downstairs to Rob. UCF credits an ill conceived personnel adjustment by Smith's high school coach for getting yeah. him to Orlando. Coach O'Leary had seen a tape of Smith at running back, liked it. But then Smith got a new high school coach who moved him to free safety. O'Leary looked at new tape, couldn't find him, but nor could other schools. O'Leary said, hey guys, find him, sign him. They did, move him back to tailback where he flourished the season and route to winning Conference USA Freshman of the Year honors. Yeah, out of Southridge High School in South Miami. The better programs in that region of the country. Second down and ten. Off it. Almost intercepted again. Knocked down at the 43-yard line by Anthony Germany. A.K.A. the Germinator. Knocked that one down. And it's third down coming up. The pass was intended for Rocky Ross. Germany extending into a zone coverage are coming with a lot of zone blitzes they like to play man but when you're able to play man and zone and bring pressure off both that does cause confusion for the quarterbacks Todd Graham does an excellent job with the 3-3-5 or 3-5-3 for that impressive opening drive the offense for UCF is stalled looking at a third down and 10 Moffitt gonna pass again completes it a nice move, Marshall still on his feet and brought down at the 40-yard line. He was working on McGowan that time. It starts up front, Mark, when you can pick up the blitz and give the quarterback a throwing lane, and you have the big fella working one-on-one -on, -one on a much smaller defensive back. You can see the power that he has once he catches the ball. Look at that. He's got no inside help, and he's playing outside leverage. If you're going to play man-to-man, -man, take away the inside. Moffitt, it starts up front though. They gave him a throwing lane and picked up the twist. Nice. Tough for coverage to keep that ball on a big fella. Cross in motion. Moffitt with a handoff. And Smith plowing forward across the 35, just inside the 35 yard line. Talked about Brandon Marshall and how he led the team last year in tackles on defense. Uh, pretty good pro prospect. Runs a 4 6 40. Made the catch on the previous play. That's Smith you're looking at. Starting tailback. Remember that this is a team playing shorthanded without one of its key receivers. Second down and five. Trailing by 14 points. Nothing new to UCF. They're almost more comfortable playing that way. Smith running it just shy of the 30. Stopped up at the 31 yard line. About a yard short of the first down. Third coming up. For UCF, tackle on the play made by George Klinkscale that time. Again, this is a, a, a vital series for this UCF offense. If anything, when they get in the red zone now, Coach Leary feels that once they get to the 35-yard line here in field goal position, they got to get points, but they're also giving their defense a time to catch. That's lining up onto the eye. Put on the fullback. Smith the tailback. The old ISO play, and Smith has the first and then some. Telling Tulsa to lean back. Touchdown. Touchdown, Golden Knights. A 31 rushing touchdown, number 24. Close to the seven. ISO, my friend, but no, not so fast. That was the power O. <laughs> I'm going to show you what I mean. Watch a big fella, number 79, come and pull and kick out. Smith's going to kick it right behind. See the big fella? He's turning the corner. There's the kickout block, and there's Smith untouched. Bad angles for the white. Good angles for the gold helmet in the gold jersey. Well, I beg your pardon, then. The power O Thank versus you. the ISO. Kyle Smith kicking it out. He spent a little bit more time in the lab with you, partner. <laughs> the extra point is good, and it's a seven-point game. UCF ready to set it off again. Kevin Smith with a sixth rushing touchdown of the season. Getting those wheels turning again for Coach O'Leary and the crew. Back after this. this season, which was snapped in the third game this year. Smith sacked back at the six. Paul Carrington was there. Their 23rd sack of the season. Yeah. Carrington, one of the seniors on this football team leadership, a big fella. 
that's long at 6'7". Now watch him get his edge. See, Parrott's feet got crossed and it's over. Whenever an offensive lane's feet get crossed, it's done. It's, a, it's one of those, look out, Paul, he's coming. And he came with some authority. We talked about the great freshman on this team, but he's one of those valuable seniors, one of five seniors that sees significant time. One of the guys that initially might not have bought in, yeah. but now has. Big Third down and 24. Big screen down, Mark, big screen. Smith sacked again. Duzabel with the sack, and it's fourth down for Tulsa. It's actually a good job of pass pro, but a good job of coverage. And right there, Smith has got to deliver the football or throw it away. Another sack. And again, that just builds confidence for the defensive line. If you throw it away, you get an incomplete pass. But if you get another sack, that builds confidence for those up front guys. Lance Thompson, the defensive coordinator. Nice little chess match against Charlie Stubbs, the offensive coordinator for Tulsa. High snap for Kendra. And not one of his better punts. It takes a UCF bounce. It's going to be down at about the 33-yard line. And Stephen Moffitt and UCF offensively will be working with a shorter field this time around. A season ago, they did not win a football game in 11 contests. Now, on the break, the Conference USA Championship. Back right after this. Third down and five coming up. Really has a nice style where he hits it up inside, and he's your he's your slasher guy. One and run, one move and gone. Gets to the 24 for the first down. Moffitt fires, and it's incomplete. Intended for Marshall at the 20 yard line. Couldn't pick it up off the rug. Yeah. And it's fourth down coming up. You know that's on Moffitt because it looks. He's got to catch his football, I agree, but there's man-to-man -man coverage. You can't match up with the big fella out there. That's not on Moffitt. That's on Marshall. Yeah, He's he got to be able to make that catch. That was a well-thrown ball. A lot of times you throw the slant low so you don't get your big fella killed. I mean, that's slant. you got people running from the inside out hitting you. Yeah, you put it right where it had to be. In comes Matt Crater now to attempt this field goal. It's going to come from about 46 yards out. Got a call from his old high school coach this week. Words of inspiration. He's 12 of 20 on the year. Not a bad time for a fake here either. Get it down. And Crater knocks it through. The Golden Knights to within four with 8.45 to go in the first half. That's the 45th field goal of his career, and Tulsa with possession, looking at third down and about nine. Harrington Adams is the lone back, beside quarterback Paul Smith. Screen, a little blitz coming, and Smith throws it away. A wise career decision. Fourth down coming up. Chris Welsh with the pressure for UCF. Anytime the back jumps inside and doesn't go hit anybody and stops his feet, screen, screen, screen should be the call. That's exactly what Adams did and what they, they tried to split everybody out. UCF burned on the screen twice, not a third time. Been an interesting game of ebb and flow as it pertains to Tulsa's offense against UCF's defense. After Tulsa had it going on three straight drives with scores, They've been stymied somewhat in the last couple. I, 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 Mark, they're, really, they're not doing a lot different. It's just they're playing with more fire and passion. There's Kindred's punt. A high spiral coming down to the 33, fielded by Burnett. Go oh, Burnett. Jake. Got a seam. Got the punter to beat. Smoking Joe Burnett. Touchdown. Helmet on. Keep your helmet on. Ah, it's... Yeah. Going flags. Joe Burnett with a touchdown run of the punt return. The flag most likely because he took his helmet off. A 68-yard punt return for the freshman.
You can certainly understand his emotion and his exuberance, but at some point, you don't want to hurt your team by taking your helmet off. After the play, an unsportsmanlike conduct on number 19, UCF, and removing his helmet. That penalty will be administered on the kickoff. Well, and this is where you got to be careful on how you handle the young fella. Right there, you see Lance Thompson. It looks like he's going to go. And this is beautiful running, setting up patience, catching the ball in traffic. Then this, this cannot be coached. Read my shoe size. It's about a size 10. UCF on the verge of going out to a three-point lead. And that made all conference this year in Conference USA, a freshman from about 30 minutes from here, from Eustis, Florida, first team All-Conference USA. One more look at that 68-yard touchdown return. Uh, I love Marco. He, he catches the ball in traffic. He's got gold shirts and white shirts all around him. And you see the vision. And this, again, it can't be taught. When you have speed, you have speed. He outruns Adams right there, the tailback. Uh, this is where it, it could cost UCF with field position, Mark. Now, the kid has a strong leg. Very strong leg. But then you got Ashlyn Davis back right. there, who's a danger and a threat every time he touches that football. He's returned six kickoffs for touchdowns in his career. He's tied for the NCAA lead with USC's Anthony Davis. This might be the one chance he gets to return one. And here it is, Davis at the 16. Ashlyn Davis ready oh. to answer. Davis with a nice return into UCF territory at the 45-yard line. So as a result of the penalty, right. good starting field position by the Golden Hurricane here. And that's when you, you've got to kill the selfish beast inside of you and keep your helmet on, even though you made a great play, because this could be the result. You have Ashlyn Davis, who's a threat. Now you have Tulsa creating field position for the rest of the second half with 6.40, 54 left to go in the game. And you're, even if they don't score, they're going to back your offense up. Garrett Mills has been pretty quiet of late. There he goes in motion. Smith is going to take off, and he's brought down at the 21-yard line. He slipped and fell, and Jason Benson was there just in case. We talked about the enthusiasm of the crowd. This was the scene during the week at the Student Union Center at the ticket outlets. They lined up for hours. Actually, at one point, somebody pulled a fire drill. Bob pulled a fire alarm, and uh, people didn't get out of line. They stood there. Yeah. Somebody trying to move up a little yeah. bit, huh? Yeah. Just trying to find a way to win. Got to get off the phone. Yeah. Dial up a little defense here. Third and 14. Smith completes it. Now short of the first down, it's Davis. With a nice kickoff return a few plays ago. He's brought down to the 13 by Donnell Neal. And it's fourth down coming up for Tulsa. DeVault comes in to lead the field goal team. We're watching Friday night fights on ESPN. That's what we're doing. We're seeing punch, counter punch, punch, counter punch. I mean, this is a great game, and guys are going after it. You can tell there's more energy and something to the kids. You know this is a championship game. Brad DeVault, good stats on the season, 14 of 17. With a career long this year of 52. This one coming from 29 yards out. The vault for the tie. And he just got it inside that far left upright. That's the 43rd field goal of his career. So both field goal kickers with a good attempt in this game. Third down and six. Moffitt is one of his last six. Fires high again that time, intended for Marshall. And it's three and out for UCF. Well, there's a counter punch I was talking about where UCF was strong offensively, yet Tulsa answers the challenge defensively. Fourth down coming up for UCF. Aaron Horn into punt, averaging a little over. 42 yards on the season, and there's Ashlyn Davis, a dangerous kickoff returner as well as punt return. This is Horn's second punt of the afternoon. Davis at the 28, made the first man miss. Ashlyn Davis out to the 35, a seven yard return on a 37 yard punt. And first down and 10 for Tulsa. From their own 34, a little play action by Paul Smith. 
And he has his tight end open and a catch for the first down of the 40. Garrett Mills once again. Jason Benson fell down on the play. Well, Garrett Mills is not your normal tight end because he runs great routes. Look at his head. He's selling the post with his head. He breaks out to the flag route in the in great job of he, I don't know if he had to leave his feet, but he left his feet with the ability to stay about. He's as good as they get as far as running routes. Good. We saw a pretty good tight end last week. Yeah. This kid's pretty good also. He's more of an H-back guy, kind of move guy that can do a lot. Little schools, including Stanford and Oklahoma State, said he was a little too small to play tight end for them. Turns into Adams now into the backfield, and Smith calls a timeout for Tulsa. That's a good awareness by Smith. I'll go back to Garrett Mills from some great lineage as far as football goes. His dad, Mike, and his uncle, Kevin Harlan, both played football at Tulsa, so he grew up on Hurricane football. We talked about the great program rebuilding. At UCF and George O'Leary personally has undergone a resurrection after being the head coach at Georgia Tech. He had the misfortune of having inaccuracies on his resume at Notre Dame and went on to Minnesota with the Vikings and back here to Central Florida. First down and 10. His defense on the field, Paul Smith taking a bite out of it. Touchdown, Garrett Mills. Mark, the first play of the game was the exact same play. UCF didn't fix it then, and they didn't fix it now. And what they're going to do is they're going to show bootleg and roll Smith to one side. Watch Mills. He's going to come and do the little sneaks. He's going to fake like he's going to go across, then back to the corner route. Turns the corner around, and Paul Smith throwing a strike. Now, if I'm UCF, i got to say, wait a second, who are they throwing the ball to? Garrett Mills? Right. Maybe I should put one, two, maybe three guys on him because they're not throwing it to anyone else. Ranford Parks victimized on Garrett Mills' ninth touchdown catch this year. And UCF trailing Tulsa now, 31 to 24. Back and forth they go. Take one more look at this touchdown catch. Yeah, this is a repeat of the first play of the game that Tulsa ran offensively. He's going to go like he's going to boot, then he drops back to buy himself some time. And when you got a, 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 a route runner like Mills, who's not overly fast, but he's plenty fast enough, and he, he sells the route with his head. He gives him, he gives him a nice little head fake and look. And when he gives him that look, the DB jumps with him on the look, and he breaks it off nice with a burst to the corner. Paul Smith, perfect timing on the throw. Great protection, by the way. Pass. Yeah, we're going to get a chance to go inside the mind of the head coach, George O'Leary. At halftime, Rob Stone going to visit with him briefly before he heads into the locker room. With 2.06 to go in the first half. Benson on the kickoff return. Benson following his wedge nicely. And Pollard and pushed out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Fourth and three coming up. They've got to get down to the 34. Yeah, I go now. I, I, you know, you got Dontavious Wilcox in the ball game, but I go a hard count right here because I would be coming if I'm Tulsa. Let's see if they blitz it. Moffitt on a predetermined quarterback run. Moffitt has the first down at the 32-yard line, keeping the drive alive with 103 to go. That's why I would be coming. Why? I mean, you have a lot of time with a minute three left. If you only rush three. Your guys are dropping back automatically. They don't read the quarterback draw. He's got the automatic first down because you're only bringing three. You're not. You're not filling any lanes. Seventy percent on the season on fourth down. Moffitt. Marshall with his shoes on. Another first down at the twenty-yard line. Working once again on McGowan. Stops the clock with fifty-one seconds to go in the first half. A twelve-yard pickup. Not going to call him shoeless, Brandon. They gotta hustle up though. Get this one off. Boy, they let a lot of time go. They go into the end zone. Incomplete for Marshall with three Marcus seconds Madison to go in the half. And in comes the field goal unit led by Matt Prater. I'll tell you, that was that was a near miss. There, that was a well-thrown by ball by Moffitt, or his guy or no guy gets it. Court. This field goal attempt gonna come. Uh, from about 40 yards out. Raiders already made one from 46 today. Let's look at the numbers on the season. This an opportunity to cut the lead to four and 
Tulsa is going to try and put Prater on ice. Tough to do in this 72 yeah. degree sunny weather in Central Florida. And remember, the winner of this game most likely will get an invite to the Auto Zone Liberty Bowl. This an opportunity for UCF to pull within 31 to 27. Prater from 40 yards out. Good snap. And Prater is true. That's the end of the first half of play. Tremendous ebb and flow, several changes and swings in momentum. As UCF scored first, then 21 unanswered points by Tulsa, then 17 unanswered points by UCF, and then a touchdown catch by Mills, and a field goal to end the first half. Downstairs to Rob with O'Leary. Coach, how can you limit their tight end, Garrett Mills, in the second half? Oh, well, it's supposed to be double him. I wonder where the other guy is, but he's a good player. But we got to do something at halftime, make some adjustments here, because, you know, we can't be playing him one up and uh, one on one. And, and we're supposed to have help on him, so we got to clean some things up at halftime. Today's game developing into a, a matchup of counter punches. How does that pace work for your program well, today? I'd rather see us stop him and some, get some three and outs. We need to be doing that, and we need to get some turnovers ourselves. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. All right, supposed to be doubling uh, Garrett Mills, huh? Well, it's time now for the Pontiac Halftime Performance Report, and uh, it was Patrick Henry that said, Reese Davis, give us liberty or give us death. Tulsa leading 31 to 27, Tulsa's highest offensive output in the first half of any game so far this season. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Bielman, Rob Stone down to the field. Chris, three lead changes, two ties, one inaugural conference USA championship on the line, and uh, the ebb and flow has been incredible in this well, game. It's, it's two guys that, that are desperate for a championship, and they're playing with that passion and desperation that you love to see kids play with. But for UCF, the one thing they have to do is they got to find a way to control Garrett Mills. George Leary told us, well, we're supposed to be doubling them, but they're not been doubling them throughout the game. Take a look at our Napa game track, some of the key points and key junctures of the game. Kevin Smith running for over 100 yards for the fourth time this season. 103 on 12 carries so far, and Joe Burnett, another one of those talented freshmen for George O'Leary, the head coach of UCF, with a 68-yard punt return for a touchdown. And Garrett Mills, hey, double team? What double team? Breaking ankles, fracturing fibulas. On that nice catch, and then a touchdown reception near the end of the first half, and that's where we stand right now, 31 to 27, and Davis gonna get an opportunity to return it. Ashlyn Davis with another electrifying return, as he's done so many times on the season. This one all the way out to the 45-yard line, and that's exactly why teams late in the year have begun to kick away from him. That's why he's got six career kickoff returns for a touchdown. Fourth down and 11 coming up. Kindred into punt, his third of the afternoon. Well, Burnett has already returned one for a touchdown, 65 yards earlier in the first half. See if he gets an opportunity here. His feet are planted on the 10 yard line. Andrew Punny from his own 45, a low line drive. He's going to try and aim for the corner. Oh, did he get it? It goes into the end zone. That was extremely close, missing by inches. A 43-yard punt that'll come out to the 20. We'll be back after this. Garrett Mills on the bench as he watches UCF's offense now on the field. A look at those impressive numbers on the season. A Division I record holder for yards by a tight end. That's quite a record, Mark. You think of a lot of the great tight ends that played throughout the history of college football. That's something. First and ten coming back the other way. Stephen Moffitt hands it off. And Kevin Smith gets about two yards to go back to the studio. All right, Reese. Another run that time to the right side of the offensive line. Kevin Smith stopped up on the play nicely by Nelson Coleman. And Hopkins also in the neighborhood. It'll be third down and long coming up for UCF on this, their opening drive of the third quarter. One way to stop the power O plays, if you get penetration, you knock the pooler off. And that's exactly what Coach Graham's defense did when they swarmed to the football. Penetration kills everything. Well, third and eight is usually Brandon Marshall time. We have man coverage. A little pressure coming backside. A fumble. Tulsa has it. 
They recovered the 16-yard line. Nelson Coleman recovered after the hit by Nick Bunting. And Tulsa in great field position here to capitalize. Now this is uh, this could be on Moffitt or it could be on the wide receivers. And here's a good job of Bunting coming around. And see that securing with his left hand and having the knowledge to come with his right to club the ball out of there. That's a great job by John Bunning, knowing what to do. An all-conference player for two years. Patrick. Second down and goal. And about to Adams. And stopped up a good form tackle. Chris, I know you like that one at the two-yard line. The number 98, Nelson Frisner, leading the way. Yeah, Frisner got him low, and, and Rashid, Rashad got him high. Again, they're, they're, they're counting on everything on the cutback. Right there, Frisner low, Rashad high. That's a good job of wrapping, though, because if you don't wrap up, Adams will make you miss like he did in the first half. Pad level. Watch this. Low man wins. Low man wins. Third and goal coming up. Backs out of the offset eye. Parrish is the deep back at Parrish. And he's stopped up short of the goal line by Benson. It'll be fourth and goal coming up for Tulsa. Parrish was stopped up at about the one yard line. And what does Steve Cragthorpe do now? Yeah, you see, football is a game of pad level, leverage. Right there, when a defensive end gets inside Mills' block, he's lower than Mills. Mills cannot push him down the field and change the line of scrimmage. The defensive end penetrates and is able to close the distance to the ball carrier, get under his feet, and stop his forward momentum. And in comes the field goal unit Ooh. led by Brad DeVault. Do you like this decision? No, no. One yard to go. No, no. We play, play for championships here. You've got him on a half yard line. You've got him reeling. You've been running the ball all day. Uh, I'd, I'd go for it. These teams playing for a bowl berth. The vault. Chip shot from 18 yards out. The winner of this game will most likely go to the AutoZone Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. And Steve Cragthorpe engineered his turnaround three years ago, and it continues today. At the 16-yard line. Here's why I would have went for it, Mark. If you don't get it, they got to go 99 and a half yards for driving your defense. This came out and started fast in the third quarter. Right. You put them in the brink, and at least you can control the field position. You're a half yard away. I say pound it in there. Conversely, a good stand defensively by Lance Thompson's D. There's Benson coming out. Benson takes it out to the 27-yard line. You know, when Tulsa came from the WAC and UCF came from the MAC, a lot of skeptics and critics say, hey, it's going to be tough for you guys. We got some defenses in Conference USA. Well, these neophytes have made themselves at home in the new conference. Moffitt certainly has done that with his main target, Brandon Marshall, who gets the first down to the 42 yard line. He was working against Julian McGowan to pick up 15 yards on the play. Well, this is the growth of Stephen Moffitt right here because he had. Darcy Johnson is tight end wide open, but he had the patience to let Brandon Walker work his route on the out cut and deliver a strike. That's the growth and patience and the mental discipline of Stephen Moffitt. He's shown the ability to bounce back. We'll see how he bounces back after that fumble, which led to the field goal for Tulsa. This time he hands it off. Over the left side, it's Kevin Smith who picked up about three, brought down by Nick Bunting. Kevin Smith had a big first half for UCF. Went for over 100 yards as we take a look at the pass distribution by Stephen Moffat. Most of them to his uh, wide receiver, Brandon Marshall, yeah. and a couple to his tight end. How did they get Darcy Johnson involved a little bit more as tight end? Well, they're trying to, Mark, but he, he's smart because he's reading his, his second option first. He's reading the deeper receiver first and letting that develop. But Darcy Johnson's been open, but he wants to go for the bigger yardage plays. He looks to Johnson that time. Moffat with a great up move and he threw it away it's picked again Roy Roberts into UCF territory and Stephen Moffitt with an egregious error that time costing another turnover that's the third pick of the year for Roberts again now, now he does he does a great athletic move by spinning away from the sack and keeping his eyes down the field as he's looking for a receiver to open to, but he panics a little bit, kind of shot puts. See, so kind of shot puts and throwing the ball high, 
And Roberts being right there, breaking on the football, reading the quarterback's eyes. Another turnover, which is the third turnover. And do not forget, Tulsa has scored right. points off turnovers the previous two, 10 of them. First and 10 coming up. Hand it off to Parrish, and Parrish with a nice move. Got about eight. Second down and two from just inside the 40. Second down and two coming up for the Golden Hurricane. Give it to Parrish, and Parrish has the first down, and then some. And Parrish has shown the ability to, to not only make people miss, Chris, but to move the pile forward after the hit. Oh, when, when, I, when, I, when I was down on the field before the game, I took a look at Parrish up close, and he's powerfully built in his lower body. College football presented by Nokia Tulsa, leading Central Florida. 34 to 27, the winner of this game most likely will get a bid to the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. It's also leading by seven. And a little pop play, it's Adams. Adams gets to the edge, a nice game inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. Tulsa, the winners of the regular season West Division in Conference USA. And UCF winners in the East Division. They posted the best record in Conference USA. Subsequently, they get home field advantage for this contest. But so far, Tulsa has nullified that home field advantage. I like what Tulsa does with, with Adams right there. They had three wide receivers or three people lined up to the left. They put Adams bringing in motion. They outflanked UCF's defense. Second and two, Davis in motion. Smith. Completed the 17 yard line intended for Idris Moss. It'll be third down coming up for the Golden Hurricane. This is coming off a Stephen Moffitt interception, his second consecutive turnover on successive possessions. He had a fumble in the previous one, which led to a Tulsa field goal. George O'Leary's team looking for a stop here. They got one last time. Fourth, actually third and goal. Looking at third and two here. They have Garrett Mills spit out here. They usually split four out to run the football. They hand it off in a big seam. Adams scores touchdown. That's how you convert on third down. Exactly what we're talking about, Mark. They split you out wide to force your defense to cover outside. And they hit it up, and all uh, Adams does make one guy miss because if somebody's tackling the shoelaces. Right Same here, there's the people the split out. Andrew you give it to Garrett Mills, there's nobody there. You get two guys in one gap. You have a guy come up and tackling shoelaces. You don't have a chance, and you have Garrett Mills blocking Barnett, the freshman in the end zone. Adams will make you hurt. Adams with his third touchdown today, his second rushing touchdown. Missed tackle by Jason Vincent. Costly on that play. The extra point good. And it's a 14-point advantage right now for the Golden Hurricane. And close. It, it, it look rugby-ish. Little uh, Buffalo Bills, Tennessee Titans. First and ten. Moffitt. Out of backfield, completes it. That's Smith. And Smith brought down to the 33-yard line. That'll be the last play of the third quarter, a quarter in which UCF and Stephen Moffat failed to get into the end zone. They look kind of shaky. We'll see how they bounce back in the final period after this. Welcome, everyone, back to the Conference USA Championship presented by Xbox 360. College football presented by Nokia. And a bid to the AutoZone Liberty Bowl on the line. This the final 15 minutes. Moffat under heat. Almost intercepted again by Blackshire. He literally threw it into the hands of Blackshire. I think Blackshire might have been shocked by that. Yeah, it, it hit him right in the face. And what, what's happening is Stephen Moff is, is getting a little bit of panic right here. First of all, he does a good job of getting out of Germany's leg lock, but he keeps throwing it to the wrong guys. I mean, he might be throwing it to the gold helmets, but you got to look at the shirt, too. Pitong and Wilcox now lining up out of the eye. Octavius Wilcox is the deep back on second down and one. He gets the call. Wilcox has the first down. Churning his way and careening his way down to the 27-yard line. 
Plenty of time remaining. 12 and a half minutes to go. Wilcox giving Kevin Smith a breather. George O'Leary, a popular guy in Central Florida these days. When you're able to go ahead and reel off first down and two downs, it's okay to run the football. And they're giving Tulsa a look that they didn't give them until the first half where they're going two backs and two wide receivers. And they come back with a regular formation of 12 personal, one back, two tight ends. Loss in motion. Over the game, Wilcox over the right side, has a lane. Oh, and he's tripped up at the nine yard oh, line. Or else he might have gotten a score, but instead it'll be first down and goal for UCF. A 17 yard burst by Dontavius Wilcox. Yeah, Dontavius showed a lot of bursts, and this is one of those cases, Mark, where his brain gets ahead of his feet. He's seeing six points because he's got it. All he's got to do is keep his feet and run in the end zone, and he gets tripped up by the 15 yard line. 17 yard gain on the play. First and goal. Blocked by Brandon Marshall, who was out there. First and goal. it off again. It's Wilcox again got about two yards stopped up by Anthony Germany. One of those five DBs that they play in that 3-3-5 alignment or as you like to say Chris a 3-5-3. Three, three. Well it is because both of those the, the bandit well, they call him the, the, the bandit guy the bandit man comes up there and you have your strong safety up there. You play one safety in two corners. They use those guys as a smaller outside linebackers. That's a tough position to play. You got to be a special athlete to play there. Kevin Smith watching from the sidelines as he saw Anthony Germany, the DB. Looked like he was fatigued a little bit. This is Wilcox, tries the right side, and he stopped up. Anthony Germany got there along with Nick Bunting. And it'll be third down and goal to go. There's a look at Bunting helping out on the last stop. You know, Bunting earlier this season made the Benaric and Butkus watch list. The only Conference USA player to do so. 6'1", 230-pound junior. He's a solid football player. I watched him on film. He makes plays all over the place. But uh, one way that Tulsa's countering now, they see that they're stuffing the ball and trying to run it. Coach Graham, what he's doing is he's committing eight folks to the run. And it doesn't matter if they're defensive linemen. They're bringing them to shooting gap. So the play action is open all day if they want it. Third and goal. Marshall split wide to the top of the there screen. Moffitt looks his way. And Moffitt sacked. Back at the 16-yard line by Brandon Lohr. Now Brandon Lohr wasn't fooled. And, and the fact that it was third down, I guarantee you, Coach Graham over there on the sideline say, hey, Brandon, you got con contained. Watch the boot. I mean, you, you could almost feel that that play action was going to come. Brandon Lohr fell, made a great play in an open field tackle on Stephen Muff. Second and a half sack of the year. Fourth down coming up. And uh, looks like they're planning on going for it. And remember, and Dontavious Wilcox not tripped up at the 10 yard line. He might have gotten into the end zone. Instead, they're looking at fourth and goal from the 15 yard line as UCF calls a timeout. He set the NCAA Division 1A record for yards by a tight end. So that's an incredible accomplishment. But if you kick the field goal, okay, you go up, you go up and you make it, you're down 11, which would give you a field goal, a touchdown, and a two point conversion from the tie. Here now you got to put the ball in. I don't know. They've already converted once on fourth down today. This one a little different. Fourth and goal from the 15. Off it. He's going to take off. Has a blocker, but he's brought down. And Tulsa will take over on downs from their own seven-yard line. Bobby Blackshear put an end to the dream that time. Nelson Coleman also in on the stop. And Tulsa did a good job. They wanted to bring pressure yet protect the end zone. So how do you do that without the threat of getting beat? as you play a zone blitz where you can guard and not fall off the cliff. The defense rests, albeit temporarily. We'll be back. Well, their offense, Tulsa's offense, fifth nationally coming into the game on third down conversions. First down and 10. Parrish again. Boy, he is nimble, and we have a flag. Multiple flags being tossed into the pile at the 45-yard line. I mean multiple. I counted four. And Parrish with that deceiving strength at 5'9", 209. Personal foul, face mask, number 19 on the defense, 15-yard penalty added to the run, first down. Another one against UCF. 
can see right here. There's a face mask there, and it's double face mask. First down and 10. Adams now in the backfield. Give it to Adams. Dropped down immediately at the line of scrimmage by Kareem Reed. Five and a half minutes to go. Tulsa, the winners of the Western Division in the regular season in Conference USA. Playing here in Orlando against UCF, who won the East Division. Tulsa comes in 6-2 and two in league play, and UCF was 7-1. and one. Well, I do believe it's important to note that Tulsa started this drive with 10 minutes to go, and they've already run half of that off, and they're pounding them, too. They're not doing it with trickeration, Reese. <laughs> what they're doing it with is good old-fashioned, here we come, football down your throat, do what you can to stop us. Brad Fork, the former WAC Coach of the Year. The toss, it's Moss. And Moss is stopped up just inside the 25-yard line at the 24. Jason Benson in on the tackle for UCF with 4.43 to go. And we talked about O'Leary and what about the job that the coaching staff has done for Tulsa. Steve Crankthorpe, the former quarterback coach for the Buffalo Bills. And both these coaches bring a lot of that, to, that pro attitude and professional moxie to their respective programs, doing great jobs. Yeah, I think when, when, you, when you're rebuilding a program, you need somebody that's even keel. Both these guys keep it even keel. They have high standards set for their coaches and their players. Tenth play of the drive coming up, third down and long. Smith with all day to pull the trigger, and he finds his target, Garrett Mills, for the first down. With 4.08 to go. Well, he's going to his comfort level. And Garrett Mills is his comfort level. And Garrett Mills runs an excellent route right here. This is a pro route. What I mean by this, you watch him come in motion. They want to get him in space and work him one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to bring it in and shoot back out. See how he shoots back out? He sets Hogue up, the young linebacker. Hogue turns his back when he starts coming in to look back at the quarterback. As soon as he does that, Mills breaks it back out to the outside on the read route. And Paul Smith just being patient. I know what you're running, and here it comes. Well, Mills has to listen to his dad and his uncle Mike, uh, or actually his uncle Kevin, talk about the good old days of Tulsa football. He's creating the good old days right now. This time it's Parrish on the run. Stays in bounds. The clock continues to run as Hogue makes the stop. We talked about Mills. Uh, yeah, his father played football for Tulsa, as it did his uncle Kevin. As a youngster, he grew up on Golden Hurricane football. You know, there was a time when Tulsa football was one of the most prolific passing games and aired out attacks in football back in the early 60s. Second down and five. And to, uh, again, Mark, I, you look at all the great tight ends that have played over the history of college football, and you're watching a young man here who's the all-time reception leader or yardage leader all-time receiving tight end of all time. Second and five, a little pop play. They give it to the end. And a nice tackle on Ashland Davis by number 95, Paul Carrington, who has remained indefatigable throughout this game. Tireless. He has played well. And not only that, he's, he's killing them out there. He does a good job. I mean, he, he can, he's so long that he reached out there with a big stem and a big claw and pulled down little Ashland Davis. This is the last game. He's going out fighting. Third down and seven. This drive has been like meticulous surgery for Tulsa. It started 12 plays ago, 83 yards ago. This is the longest drive of the day for the Golden Hurricane, coming at the most opportune time. Will they be the representatives of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl? That's the question that lingers should they hang on and win. Parrish straight ahead with two and a half minutes to play. Tulsa leading by 14 points. You know, what's been impressive to me, Mark, is the taking the ball, the length of the field, eight-minute drive to drive the stay calls, yes. the killer instinct. And UCF calls a timeout. Looking at fourth down and seven now for Tulsa. Mark, and if you're UCF, I mean, if you're the fans, look, you're going to get a bowl game out of this deal. You've got something special happening down there. We were over there at the facilities. You've got a new stadium coming up on campus in 2007. You've got a great student body following. This is a season yep. to be proud of, no matter if they come up short or not, when they were picked last in the east of CUSA. Don't forget, coming up next, folks, it's number nine Memphis against Cincinnati College Basketball on ESPN. Brad DeVault in to attempt this field goal come from 26 yards out and 
one more nail in the coffin of UCF. He's three for three today. He's connected from 29, 18, and 26 yards. Steve Cragthorpe can sense something special. He can feel it's palpable now, it's tangible. His Conference USA Championship, where do they go? Here's Rob Stone. Ah, well, Coach may be feeling what Memphis in December is going to be like. And again, this game is still going on, but Will you commit to us and say that the winner of this game that we're watching yeah. right now will be coming your way? Keeping with the integrity of letting the coaches and players win it on the field, we want the winner to play on December 31st at noon on ESPN in the 47th Annual AutoZone Liberty Bowl game. If the game was over right now, you're ready to hand it to Tulsa, right? Yeah, you, you got the winner. The winner's going to pump. How about that? <laughs> That's right. Whoever wins, it's simple math, right? Whoever wins this game is going to Memphis. All okay, right. well, we have a great game and the seventh oldest bowl game. We've had great coaches and great players. Uh, one more year in that great tradition. All right, we look forward to seeing you later this month. Thank you. All right, Rob got it out of him. Beale Street will be rocking on New Year's Eve and the uh, AutoZone Liberty Bowl, part of the great festivities. It's going to be a great matchup, whoever ends up in it. Mark, you're talking about sons of coaches. Coach Craig Thorpe is the son of a coach. His father, I believe, won a uh, 1AA national championship at one time with Idaho State. Yeah, Idaho State and a head coach at uh, Oregon State, yeah. too. 2.24 to go in the fourth quarter. Started off as a day of promise for UCF. They went up 7 to nothing, and then Tulsa came back. With 21 consecutive points, UCF came back with 17 straight points. Tulsa led by four at halftime, and they have shut out UCF here in the second half of play. The kickoff is a pop job down to the 15. And good return out to the 45-yard line. Garrett Mills put up the best numbers of any tight end in Division I football this year, and he is today's next player of the game. First and 10 for UCF, and Moffitt put it on the ground again, a fumble. And Tulsa has it back, and that should just about do it. That's the fourth turnover of the game for the Golden Knights in a not-so-golden day for George O'Leary. Chad Evans recovering the loose ball for the Golden Hurricane. You're going to see right here pressure coming from the outside. And that's John Bunny, or Bunny coming again. Making a big play. He's been making a big play all day with Chad Evans. So I'm going to show you what I'm If I'm Central Florida and I got that look, I'm taking all these guys right here. And I'm going to try to strip the football because I ain't going to quit. Smith hands it off to Adams. Adams about a yard short of the first down with 40 seconds to go. And again, I don't want to downgrade at all what Central Florida's done. We talked about this yesterday that this is a place about ready to explode. Once they get that on-campus stadium, and the facilities here are outstanding, and George O'Leary is the guy to lead them into the future. He wants to keep coaching. He's a young 59 years old. He wants to keep going. Yeah. A successful year on both fronts, but today it's about Steve Cragthorpe in his third season as the choreographer of a continuing and burgeoning growing program successfully rebuilt and the inaugural champions in Conference USA and off to a bowl game they go. 44-27, the final score. Don't forget to tune into ESPN News for the presentation. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader of sports. Right now, we're going to go to Dave O'Brien and Rick Majerus in Cincinnati.